evening guys welcome to another burnt river ranch video tonight we're in the fairwing barn our brand new fairwing barn and we get to use it for the first time tonight because we have a sow in labor here we have sheila in here she's farrowing and she's having her first litter of piglets in here and it's our, also our first time getting to use the farrowing barn for its intended purpose so far she's had two little girls we have a red one and a red one with black spots so that's exciting, getting to try out the farrowing barn and make sure that everything's where we want it to be before we 100% put everything where it's going to be in its final spot. So, it's exciting. That's what I'm up to tonight. I want to talk to you guys about how we came to the decision to change our farm to using farrowing crates. And I also want to say that there is a difference between a gestation crate and a farrowing crate, okay? So a farrowing crate is something that the sow goes in to give birth and maybe stays in for a few weeks. A gestation crate is something that the sow stays in for the entire duration of her pregnancy. And that is not what we're doing here. Our sows are housed together outside um, during their pregnancy and they only come into a farrowing crate like the day before they're due and then they have their babies in there and then they're in there for a few weeks until the babies are strong enough to get out of the sow's way and she's gotten a little less clumsy and isn't in pain anymore. and then she's out of the farrowing crate now, I'm very well aware that there are a lot of misconceptions about farrowing crates, and as a result, people don't like them. The general population does not approve of farrowing crates. I know that some people deem them to be cruel or abusive, but that is far from the case. I find that most people that have an opinion like that are people that have not actually farrowed out pigs before and really don't have an idea of what it entails. So... Pigs are big, big animals. When they have babies for the first time, they're upwards of 350 pounds. And the more mature sows that have farrowed pigs before are usually around 500 pounds. So they're big and they're clumsy and they're not very well aware of their surroundings. And especially when they're in pain and they're going through the labor process, they kind of get a little bit destructive, maybe not paying attention very well to where they're at and where their feet are at and where their babies are at. So things can get, um, things can go south quite quickly during a farrowing, even if you're there supervising. So for us, we've made the choice to switch over to farrowing crates for a few different reasons, but some of the big ones are obviously keeping the piglets safe, trying to avoid accidents from crushing, or from being stepped on, or even from being eaten. We haven't had a big issue with sows eating piglets, but I know that some people have had that issue. So for us to have the sow in a crate, it kind of helps reduce some of those issues. Um, it also keeps us safe, and that's important as well, because like I said, sows are big animals. Um, they move a lot quicker than you think, and obviously when they're in labor and they're in pain and there's babies involved and hormones involved, um, they can get pretty ornery and very dangerous very quickly. So it's really important that we're also safe because our pigs depend on us for survival. They depend on us to make sure that they are well taken care of, well cared for. And so, you know, I think it's important that we stay safe as well. So if I need to go in there and I need to give her a shot of oxytocin because she has a retained placenta or she's having issues with birthing her piglets, I can now safely do that. If I need to get in there and take piglets away from her because she's being uh, not so nice and not being very aware of her surroundings, well, then I can safely go in and take the piglets away from her. I don't have to worry about her attacking me while I do that. Um, also, the piglets are able to safely get away from her on both sides now with these crates. So if she decides to lay down, she has less of a chance of just laying on top of them. Because we have had issues in the past of sows laying on their babies, and you can hear the babies absolutely screaming their face off. 
and the sow does not care. She doesn't even get up. She doesn't even try to move. So then obviously they end up suffocating and dying. So that's not great. Um, so that is another thing that these crates kind of help prevent. Um, when we need to get in there and do iron shots and castrations and such vaccinations, whatever, we can get in there and do that safely. We can handle the piglets um, early on when they're supposed to be handled. And that is nice as well. So, like I said, I'm very aware that people have a negative view, a negative opinion about farrowing crates. Anyways, like I was saying before I got interrupted here by a, a needy little boy. Um, yeah, so when we first started, uh, we were definitely against farrowing crates. I also was under the misconception that they were somehow cruel or abusive, but that was before I gained experience in actually farrowing out pigs, not using a farrowing crate. So for years now, quite a few years now, we've been farrowing pigs in a more, I guess, like holistic, natural type of approach, um, which is incredibly difficult and results in a lot more losses. I feel like it does the sow and the piglets and myself no favors. Um, so the setup if you don't know, the setup that we kind of had going before this was we had smaller shelters that unfortunately we couldn't really stand up in them. So we had smaller shelters that if we needed to go in with a pig, it was putting ourselves in a fairly dangerous situation. Um, we had crush rails throughout all sides of their shelter. We had a corner blocked off that the sow could not get into that had a heat lamp in there for the piglets to be drawn away from the sow and to keep them warm. Um, I guess two things with that system. One, the piglets have no desire to go in there until they're about a week old. Um, otherwise they stick kind of by the sow and they nurse, which in theory is great. However, at the same time, when they're less than a week old, they're, they're very fragile, they're very vulnerable. Um, they have no idea how to get out of the way of a sow if she goes to lay down or step on them. So they're at the prime age in their life where they are very vulnerable to being squashed or crushed by the sow or stepped on. So really the heat lamp does us no favors in that way. Um, secondly, it definitely does not keep them warm enough in the winter time. Um, to have a, we have insulated shelters and we also have them so that the heat lamp is in there for the babies, but it doesn't keep them warm enough for them not to get chilled. So that means that you have to be out there with that sow when they're farrowing. You have to be watching for signs and you have to be out there making sure the babies are dried off and don't get chilled as it's happening, which... In our scenario, we can kind of make that work, but life happens and sometimes that doesn't work out. So if you were working a job and you weren't home then, well, you'd be kind of SOL. So that system, it just, it doesn't work for us. It's, for one, it's dangerous. And for two, it just, it doesn't work. We live in a very cold climate where it regularly gets to minus 40, minus 50. And unfortunately, with the way that piglets grow, you need to farrow them out in the winter time in order for them to hit that spring pig market when everybody wants their piglets so that they're ready to butcher by fall because less people want to have piglets in the winter. So yeah, that system just does not work very well for us at all. It is not efficient, it's dangerous, and we've had a lot of losses that I think could have been very preventable. So. We decided to switch the farrowing crate system. Whoa, baby just came out. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. We decided to switch to the farrowing crate system because I feel like 
If this doesn't work, I don't really know what will. But we don't plan to keep our sows in here for a long, long time. So really it's, you know, a few weeks out of their entire life. Another thing about our old setup was it was so darn cold going out there in February wearing like full on insulated coveralls and a headlamp and not being able to see very well and just freezing your butt off trying to help a sow have babies and yeah, not ideal. Definitely not ideal. There was no possible way to stay warm. Now we have a barn. It has power to it. We have lights so I can see. Um, also, if I want to plug in a little heater, I can do that. I have some space. I'm safe. I can stand up. I can see what I'm doing. It is just all around way better than what we had before. So um, in showing you guys this, I am fully expecting us to lose some followers because I know people don't like this system and I get it. I respect your opinion. I have tried the other way though and it doesn't work. It doesn't work practically, it doesn't work economically, it's inefficient, there's a lot of preventable losses. So that is why we've chosen to go this route and I know that we are gonna have people that don't agree with it and that is fine. You do you and we'll do us. I will show you guys a little clip of what the new barn looks like inside. Keep in mind, it is not finished yet. Um, we're trying it out and seeing if we like where we've put the crates. And if we do, then we'll bolt them all to the ground. And if we don't, then we can move them. So let's go on a little tour. All right, so we've got two doors in the barn. We've got one here, one over there. These are the farrowing crates. So we have a sow in here farrowing right now as we speak. I'm not sure if she's done yet or not. She's got seven babies in there so far. And it looks like she's starting to pass her placenta. That does not always mean she's finished, however. So we've got three stalls on this side here. We've got these two, this one and this one, bolted down to the ground. To start with, if we like where they're at, then we will keep them there. If we don't, then we can move them. The room tied up in here. It's hanging out in the barn for the night. And then we have another stall down here that we have not fully installed yet. So that's where it's gonna go though, probably. Um, then we have two more here. This is just very temporary setup. These guys aren't bolted to the floor or anything. And then over here is another space, either for another farrowing crate, or I think our plan though is to put in a milking stanchion for our milk cow for now until we build a bigger barn for the horses and the cows. So we're just gonna have to make do with this one for now because another barn is a future project for sure, not this year, that's, that's definite. But we'll have a milking stanchion here and then we have like our alleyway and our other door, and we have a window. So, nice wide alleyway to make for easy clean out. And then I'll, I'll show you guys how we load the pigs in and out of the barn in another clip because it's dark outside right now, it's late. So we picked up these farrowing crates from a lady that had them in an old barn that she wasn't using. They're they're very, very old farrowing crates, but they're still in decent shape. Um, they needed some welding and some fixing when we got them. So that took a little bit to get them kind of all repaired and some stuff still needs to be repaired on them. So it's a work in progress, but we're making it work and we got them for free. So that's why we chose to go with them. For us, we looked into ordering some new ones and they are just incredibly expensive. So we walked out and found some cheaper ones. I say free because they were no monetary value required. However, it was hell getting them out of that barn. <laughs> it was terrible. Um, they're very, very heavy. They're like 
galvanized steel, so they're extremely heavy. And there wasn't really a way to load them onto our trailer, so we had to do it manually and physically. At the time, I was nine months pregnant, so my husband had to do a lot of lifting, and I did as much helping as I could, but yeah, it was, uh, it was not fun. But they're in the barn now, and we saved ourselves some money. about the placenta meaning not necessarily meaning that she's done yeah another piglet popped out so far we've got eight that's a pretty good litter size for a first time mom fingers crossed they all do well and make it to weaning time i gotta say with a brand new baby here and my husband's sick and he's on shift right now so he's home but sleeping and sick and really not feeling very well at all um, I'm thankful that we are having a fairly textbook farrowing here. She doesn't seem to be having any complications or issues. Everything seems to be going quite smoothly. Fingers crossed it continues to go that way. But I'm thankful things seem to be going quite well because, yeah, that would be a lot to deal with. <laughs> Checking on mom and baby, seeing how everyone's doing. We just fed mom some grain and some water. So Sheila had nine little ones. And they all seem to be doing good. Mm-hmm. 